Funny thing, quarantine. It seems to have people's opinions split straight down the middle. Half the population keeps complaining because they're locked indoors, while the other half have all but stopped their whining about having to go outside and make an effort to socialize. I, for one, am quite happy to be trapped inside, although I do wish the people keeping me here would leave. I suppose this whole ordeal started a few weeks ago, when people began to close their doors after hearing about the epidemic. The streets started to empty, families had to be separated just to keep the vulnerable ones safe. When I knew my flatmate Dalase was coming back from abroad, I wouldn't even let her in. She had an accident while she was visiting her family and was looking forward to resting while she could work from home. I told her I didn't want her anywhere near the place because I couldn't risk getting infected while I was pregnant. She insisted, reminding me that most of her things were still there and she wasn't in any position to move around. Eventually I agreed and I gave her what she needed. There was only so much I could do in the state I was in. Soon enough, I waved goodbye to the outside world for one last time, and when the door was shut, I breathed a sigh of relief because I knew now that I could go back out without having to worry about people's body odor or the traffic in the morning just to go to the shops. Now I could actually take a walk outside without having to look over my shoulder for anyone giving me a weird look at night. These kinds of opportunities don't come often and I intended to take full advantage. My apartment was on street level and I lived alone. The only other person living in the same building was the landlord, Joe. He was an older fellow, lived upstairs alone for as long as I can remember. He was only renting out the bottom floor as a nice little leg up after paying off his mortgage. I remember meeting him the day I moved in. He helped me with all my things and he was just the sweetest person I ever met in this neighborhood. He made my life here bearable at least. When the quarantine started, I lost all sight of him. He was well into his older years, so he was definitely vulnerable. He even stopped coming by the door for a chat. On weekends, whenever I had the time and the patience, I'd go up to him with a nice piece of pastry I'd just taken out of the oven. Now, he doesn't even risk opening the door. I knock to let him know I was there and leave it wrapped up just outside. Whenever I went up again, I'd always find the empty container outside waiting for me, so I have to assume he still likes my baking. Thinking back, though, I always found it strange that no one else ever came to help him around the place or get him food and supplies, even after he was locked in. Still, I hope his time in quarantine was at least more enjoyable than mine. I suppose the trouble started a few nights into my first week at home. Now, usually I'm a light sleeper, but I live in the city, so random noises don't wake me up that easily. Even as a child, I was never really afraid of whatever went bump in the night. This time, something was different. It was around three in the morning when I heard it. Laughter. Except... It wasn't the typical laughter you'd hear in my street. Usually, it's some group of drunks desperately trying to crawl their way home before the coma sets in, or some lunatic talking to himself and laughing at whatever comes out of his mouth. This wasn't that, though. It wasn't hysterical laughter or cackles segmented by hiccups. It was childish. The high-pitched giggle was loud. Not only was it loud... It was close. It jolted me up from my sleep and my head moved at a speed just shy of whiplash. That was the first time I saw it. Him, her, whatever it was. It was in my window and I could feel it looking at me. My hand moved to turn the light but in the second it took me to find them, all that was left in the window was the curtain swaying gently in the breeze. Of course nothing was there. Why would there be? I knew living alone would start getting to people, but I wasn't about to lose sleep over it. I made sure to close the window before I went back to sleep. Let's not pretend for an instant that this was the last of the visitor. 
Three times a week, I would hear it. Sometimes four. Whatever it is, it must be accounting for longer months. It always came at night, always around three in the morning. Always coming from just outside the window in my bedroom. Every time I looked, there was nothing but darkness and a swaying curtain. After a while, I stopped acknowledging it. The place was old, after all. Centuries old. Not an hour goes by without some piece of wood creaking or popping and the wind whistling throughout the house. Those are pretty much the only things that can create those kinds of high-pitched noises. It was either that or someone's really fixated on spooking me in regular intervals. Regardless, I was able to get my hands on some blinds for the window and I mostly continued to ignore it until it came closer. On that particular night, I was in bed at the time, but I was still awake. I was laying there underneath the covers, staring at the ceiling as I so often enjoy doing when I heard the laughter. It was followed by the strange combination of scraping metal and slurping. I was thrown for a loop for a second. Whenever I heard the sound before, I'd just tilt my head to the side to block out the sound. This time, that made it worse. I glanced at the window, but I quickly realized that the noise wasn't coming from there. It sounded like it was coming from down the hall from my room. Almost as if it were coming from the kitchen, but it was getting closer. By the time I could actually think, I had already leapt out of bed and bolted toward the opposite hallway. I wanted to make sure Joe was safe and to call the police. I ran up to his front door and knocked until I couldn't feel my knuckles. No answer, the man was probably asleep. It was the middle of the night after all. I tried the doorknob. It was locked, which was a good sign. That means he was probably safe. Police it is then. I fished for my phone in my pockets, remembering far too late that it was probably by my bed. No chance in hell was I going back in there for it. It was raining outside, but I wasn't about to let that stop me. Thankfully, the police station was just a walk away. The second I took my first step forward, I spotted them from the corner of my eye. Two people in raincoats looking in my direction from across the street. One was taller than the other, and both were covered head to toe. They wore hoods that hid their faces, so I couldn't tell for sure, but the chills down my spine told me that their eyes were looking straight at me, pouring over every inch of my body. Their heads tilted downward, ever so slightly, but I could tell they were still focusing on me. I stuck to the same road and went on my way. The two figures didn't follow. Excellent. I ran. Whatever was in my house, it had a way to get in, and it got in while I was alone and could have been asleep. I arrived at the station sobbing and breathless. They were kind enough to give me a blanket and some tea while I waited. When their car came back, they told me they were able to search the whole place but couldn't find anything. There was no forced entry, no extra tracks brought in from the rain, not even a sign that anyone was in the kitchen. They asked if I saw anything, but I never gave myself a chance to. I just ran. I could do nothing more than apologize. They asked if I lived alone before the quarantine, and I said no. The two officers nodded toward each other. This was something they've probably seen before. They told me to make sure I had everywhere locked up before I went to bed, and to ask about staying with someone if things got too intense for me by myself. I thanked them for their help and for the lift they gave me back to my place. For the rest of the night, I stared out my window at the two figures who were still out there, standing in the rain. I asked Joe if he'd heard anything last night, but he said he could barely even remember to breathe or recognize himself in the mirror with the sleeping pills he takes, so he probably wouldn't even notice an intruder if they broke into his place. I called Dallas A and asked her if I could stay with her. It had already been longer than two weeks, but she apparently paid for the month in advance. That was all right, though. That meant she'd be back within a few days. I just needed to wait it out. I told her about what happened, but she knew me well enough to not take my story seriously. 
She kept saying I always exaggerated things and that I was just feeling bad for wanting to get her out of the apartment so quickly. She told me to get over it or she wasn't about to come live with someone liable to wake her up out of fright every other night. She was right, of course. I decided to take her advice and move on. That advice actually worked. For the next couple of nights, I managed to get through the night without waking up once. Eventually, the time came for Dallasay to come back. She said that she was going to visit a friend before she got home, so she was going to arrive pretty early in the morning. The day before, I made sure to get her room nice and tidy for her. As I was cleaning out the bedroom, I heard a thud against the door. I thought someone might have hit it passing by, so I didn't pay any mind. A few moments later, there were two thuds. It began to sound like knocking. I walked over to pull it open, but my hand froze on the latch. Thinking twice, I went to the window first. I pulled the blind ever so slightly, just enough to catch a glimpse of the three hooded figures wearing long coats. They were already looking at me through the window. Instinctively, I pulled myself away to make sure the door was locked. There was another knock. With each one, I half expected the thing to be blown off its hinges, but that might have been just my imagination. After some time, the knocking stopped. When I checked outside the window, two of the figures were still there, but they didn't seem to be doing anything. Night came and I headed to bed, longing to finally be sharing the place with somebody else again. I left the washing machine to do its work just to drown out the car noises while I slept. Then I heard the laugh. Whatever it was, it was back, and I could feel the hairs on my ear move. I froze. This has happened before. Every time I went to look, there would be nothing there. Except there was. I blinked and saw the silhouette of a claw dig into my mouth, pulling at my lower jaw. It was on top of me, cutting me, punching me, laughing. It was light, but it was fast. I resisted and was eventually able to push it to the side. I ran to the kitchen to grab a knife. When I reached out, I saw the blood dripping from my arm. I couldn't even lift it past my shoulder. My finger touched the hilt of the fish knife just before I hit the floor. When I woke up, I was on a stretcher. I couldn't move my arms or legs, but I saw Dallasay looking at me. She smiled and asked how I felt, but I couldn't answer. She told me the police searched the place again, but they couldn't find anything this time either. All they found was me with a knife. They already had a record about what I used to do to myself at school because of my anxiety. I guess they put two and two together. Joe, the landlord, also came to see how I was. He asked if I was alright and if I needed anything. Dallas A. joked and said that all I needed was a good night's sleep and a bottle of wine. Joe, barely awake, let out a grunt of acknowledgement and walked back inside. I remember being wheeled out of my apartment and into the back of the ambulance. They took me into the stairwell that connected my room and Joe's on the second floor. I saw a single figure in a long raincoat looking at me from outside. They were staring at the stained sheet above my stomach. Just for a moment, I heard it again. That childish, high-pitched laugh. It came from the top of the stairs, but I couldn't look. I don't think I've ever lived alone. <laughs>